Okay, Ooh, that's loud. Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome. I'll be giving the next talk. Um, I'll be talking about uh, Ansible, OpenSUSE Ansible packaging collections and roles and Ansible Lint and whatever uh, other tools we have in the Ansible ecosystem. Um, I'll be giving a, a short introduction of myself and where I come from, what I do. Um, I'll be talking about Ansible itself, what Ansible is, what Ansible does, how to use it, and uh, what belongs to Ansible. We'll touch on roles, collections, and Ansible core, and uh, then have a look at the Ansible core, uh, or the Ansible packaging for OpenSUSE. We'll talk about Ansible Lint, which does linting for Ansible, that's where the name comes from, and uh, other Ansible tools, um, we'll get to that later. Um, if there are any questions, just feel free to interrupt me, and if we don't get any questions uh, answered after the talk, I'll be around uh, until Sunday, so just uh, speak to me wherever you meet me. Uh, I'll be glad to answer all of the questions. So my name is Johannes Kastler. I'm a Linux trainer and consultant for B1 Systems, which is a German company. I'll be talking about that in a second. Um, on the open build service, you'll find me as OJ Kastel Build Service for historical reasons. Um, GitLab and uh, GitHub is, uh, uh, and Codeberg and wherever uh, you'll find me. Um, yeah. I'm a trainer, consultant, I'm a systems administrator, I'm uh, an architect, but mostly I'm a German uh, Spielkind. I like to play around with things, I like to get my hands dirty with uh, new things and technologies and see what I can do with them, and if I find any reason to use them, to have a reason to play around with them, um, most of the times I succeed with that. Um, I do a lot of configuration, Mend, Ansible, Puppet Chef, SaltStack, uh, that thing, uh, Infrastructure as Code, Terraform, and uh, CICD with Jenkins, and Kubernetes, and a lot of project management things like uh, Scrum and Kanban, and yeah. And uh, I'm the OpenSUSE maintainer for Ansible and some cloud native tools, so uh, that's where the uh, playing around comes from. Um, B1 Systems is a German company uh, founded in 2004, we're uh, about 140, 160 employees currently. Um, we do lots of things uh, all around Linux and open source and support and consultings and trainings and uh, all of the different things you'll find in a typical data center running some kind of Linux, some kind of open source. Um, and so I can have... Uh, Lots of opportunities to get my hands dirty and uh, do funny things with all of these technologies. And we'll talk about uh, one of these now, which is Ansible. Um, Ansible is a beast. Let's put it like that. Ansible does a lot of things and Ansible has grown over the years and uh, has gained a lot of additional things, but at the base, at the core, it's a configuration management system like Puppet, like Chef, like Salt. It doesn't have a central server or it doesn't require a central server by design. Unlike Puppet, Chef and Salt Stack, I know they can work without a central server now, but from the beginning Ansible was designed to not require such a server. The only thing you require is uh, SSH access to the target that you want to uh, manage and uh, some kind of Python. Nowadays, Python 3, um, it will work with uh, Python 2 if you still have that around, but shame on you. Uh, it, it gained a lot of things in the last couple of years. Um, it can talk to things where you don't expect to have SSH access by doing some kind of API calls. So you can configure all kinds of uh, appliances and network things where you just have some API and, and maybe some limited shell or something. So you can manage applications in, in, uh, in addition to servers, you can manage appliances, you can manage uh, clouds and cloud infrastructure, and you can manage your network things, switches and firewalls and whatnot. Um, and all of that was 
developed by a large community and we'll get to how that works uh, in a second. The easiest way to use Ansible is to do some kind of uh, ad hoc commands, which I won't talk about. What you want to do is you want to do some kind of playbooks, version control your, your code and uh, share it with your colleagues and make sure that everyone is using the right things. Um, you call Ansible Playbook, give it some kind of inventory and say what playbook you want to do. Basically, Ansible needs two things. What do you want to do and where do you want to do that? The playbook is the combination of where do you want to do that, which is the inventory, and what do I want to do, which is some kind of tasks. Install packages, uh, create users, run services, whatever you want. Um, this is what an inventory looks like. It's just one line with a host name in it. And with that line, obviously, you will do something on localhost. Um, it can get a little bigger. You can do groups of things. So your web servers in, are in one group, your databases, and uh, however you want to organize your infrastructure. Um, this is what a playbook looks like. Uh, it's a very basic one, but in general, you have the hosts that, that you want to do something about and you have some tasks, in this case it's just one, um, and it's doing some debug output and says hello to you guys. Um, that's basically all of it. Um, and we can do that for a second. Typing with microphone is fun. So I will do this. And there you go. Um, obviously, that's not really uh, helpful. You just get some output. I could easily do that with Echo. But uh, you get the idea. You just use your, uh, your inventory. You use your playbook. And you run that. And everything that is in your playbook will be executed. And uh, Ansible is idempotent, as the other configuration management systems are too. So it, you declare the desired state, Ansible checks if the current state matches that state, and if that is the case, it won't do anything. And if it has to do something, it knows what it needs to do and only does the things that are not as they should be, and uh, you end up in your desired state. So that's what it looks like, as I just showed you. Um, if you talk about playbooks, we saw that you have tasks in there, and if you have different playbooks, one for your web servers, one for your databases, one for your network appliances, one for your middleware, one for your recipe, whatever, you tend to end up to have a lot of code that is the same in all of them, and that could get uh, a little tedious. So you have large playbooks with lots of code, and you have large portions of that code that are the same in two of your uh, playbooks, which sucks, and you do not want to do that, so do not repeat yourself. The solution is to use roles, which is also very easy. Um, roles are reusable fragments of code. You just put the code, what the, the tasks that you previously had in your playbook, put them inside of uh, your role, and just use that role uh, in all of your playbooks, and you only have one role to manage and all of the playbooks are using that role, and you do not uh, repeat yourself, you do not have duplicate code, and uh, things like that. You can set all of the variables you need in a role to work. On Debian, the package name is this. On OpenSUSE, it's that. On Red Hat, it's still another one. All of that can be done within the role, um, so you can abstract away those differences. You can set variables for the role inside of the playbook, so you can tweak it a little bit and uh, make it do some things differently if the role allows. And finally, you can distribute uh, all of your roles in the uh, Ansible Galaxy and you can fetch other people's roles from there and just reuse what somebody else already built. Roles are not meant to distribute Ansible modules. Ansible modules are basically the Python code that is used to do something. So uh, if we have a look at the playbook, um, 
Mm, where are we? There we are. Ansible built-in debug. That is the name of the module, and this has some code that basically just outputs something to your screen. Um, this is something that you can use to enhance Ansible, but how do you distribute that? So a, a new module that talks to some new fancy API or a new cloud provider or a new network appliance, how do you distribute that? Um, and roles started to be used for that, but they were never meant to, and uh, yeah, then it gets uh, a little funny, and we get to the solution uh, in a second. So, uh, a small playbook uh, you could use, and that just has roles in it, could look like that. You have a role, and you have some variables that you are setting for that role, uh, and Depending on what I said here or what I said here, the role will act a little differently, so I can use the same role for more of my servers, but still have different usernames or different whatever the role does. Um, the packaging of Ansible was uh, kind of monolithic until version 2.9, and then people uh, got to the problem that I mentioned with the modules. You have the Ansible core functionality, you have Ansible Playbook and Ansible Inventory and Ansible Vault, and you have all the modules that Ansible has, Ansible uh, for tasks and uh, for, for packages and for users and for services. Those are the core of, of Ansible. And then you have a, a long list of selected modules. So some modules that do something with uh, GCP and some AWS things and some things for Cisco and some things for Kubernetes and th some things for Arista switches or whatever. And that long list of things was put together and was released as the Ansible package, which uh, was just a Python module more or less, with all of these different things included. The the problem was that the development of the core functionality, improving uh, the internal code, uh, improving the core things, uh, was done in the same way with the development of the modules. So a new feature in the AWS module needed to be implemented and released together with the rest. There were too many modules and too many things and too many changes to each of these modules. So releasing required to getting everything in shape and getting all of the bits and pieces working. And if you have 100 uh, cats to manage, you know that gets a little tedious. And that led to long release cycles. And you are, were waiting for a fix in one of the modules and had to wait half a year because all of the other things that were released in the other modules needed to be integrated into the next big release. And that was not working. So uh, the Ansible folks came up uh, with, with a, a new scheme of packaging. Basically, you have the Ansible core functionality and the modules released into something that was called Ansible Base and is now Ansible Core. That is just plain Ansible to get you started. You get Ansible Playbook and Ansible Vault and you get the Ansible built-in modules, debug and template and packages and things like that and everything else was stripped out and is now being released as what is called collections. Collections can contain roles and playbooks, but mostly modules and plugins. So you have a collect collection that is called AWS, where you get some AWS things. And you have a collection called GCP, which obviously does GCP. And you have a, a collection for Cisco, and you have a collection for Kubernetes, and a collection for containers, and bop, bop, bop. You get the idea. All of that is done independently, so you don't need to wait for some fix in, in Ansible Core to release a fix in your module and the other way around, which is really nice because it, it gets a lot faster. You can update single modules, single collections now. Um, you can update the core independently. Um, that is really nice. So that's the Ansible core package. You have the core functionality, you have the core executables and the core modules, so things like template and package, and uh, 
on Tumbleweed, this is built using the default Python. Um, you just need one, you don't need three versions for three different Python, Python versions. Um, and you get the basics to, to get started with Ansible. Um, the Ansible package, the RPM package and the Ansible Python module that you find on PyPI is a list of community collections bundled together with an executable, executable called Ansible Community that just does output its version, so you can check which version of that list of collections you have installed, um, and that's basically it. That is something that the community uh, puts together and you have lots of very nice collections in there and they try to uh, get fixes out quickly to these collections, um, but they are independent from the Ansible core functionality, so not depending on that. Uh, currently there's 51 namespaces and each namespace has some uh, collections in that. There are some AWS collections inside that AWS namespace and some in the containers namespace and there's a community namespace with lots of fine code. So uh, have a look at that. So what do you want to use? Basically you need Ansible core because otherwise there's no executable that you can call that does anything with Ansible. And there's the Ansible package which includes the collections. If you want, just install that and you get the community curated list of collections. You can of course install all of the, these collections manually or you can, you can install them for your user in a different version if you need to do so. And for everything else that is not included in that Ansible package, um, you can just uh, install the collection manually, Ansible Galaxy collection install and then uh, the identifier. You can also use Git submodules if you just want to have something that is not released on, uh, on the Ansible Galaxy, you can do various things with uh, collections. Ansible for slash 15 or leap 15, I had the need to uh, have an Ansible there, so I tried to package it, but uh, slash has uh, 3.6 Python, Ansible needs 3.9. Fortunately, uh, Python, there's a Python 3 module for Slash which has Python 3.10 with a small amount of uh, modules available, so I had to build a large portion of that. Since May, there's a new RPM macro for uh, Python 3.11. There will be a Python 3.11 stack on Slash 15, SP4 and SP5. Um, and I started uh, to get all the things in shape and see if I could get everything that I needed for Ansible. You can find that here in the slides, there's a link, you can find that uh, on the uh, build service. Uh, feel free to test them and report back if you encounter any issues. So, uh, linting. Everything that you do as a human is prone to errors. That's just a fact and there's no blaming, there's no problem with that. We are humans, we make mistakes, but we have computers to check our code and see where we did wrong. Um, there's a simple syntax check, Ansible playbook dash dash syntax check. Um, that is very limited, it just checks if there's some syntax errors, but uh, that's it. Ansible lint is a very, very useful tool. You can check for syntax, not only Ansible syntax, YAML syntax, you can uh, get lots of, lots of funny errors if you do things a little not as you should do. Everyone who has ever used yes as a Boolean value might know what I'm talking about. You get the community guidelines, you get uh, some no-goes, and you can decide how strict you want Ansible Lint to check the best idea is to use the production profile because that will scream at you for everything that might probably, possibly cause an issue later. Um, you get that in OpenSUSE, uh, in Tumbleweed and also in that uh, Slash 15 repository I showed. And it's available as a GitHub action. So if you have your role, your Ansible code on GitHub, just uh, use that action and uh, have Ansible Lint scream at you if you're doing anything wrong, which is pretty nice because there's some things you just mistype or uh, that might cause grief later on. Ansible Lint, 
minus minus profile uh, equals production and then your playbook and this is what you want to do, zero failures, zero warnings. If you behave badly, you might end up with something like that. You should use the fully qualified collection name for the built-in module debug and obviously I did not use ansible.builtin.debug, I just used debug and if there is the same module in more than one collection, Ansible doesn't know which one it needs to use. So there's the Ansible built-in one, which is from the Ansible core package, but there might be a debug module in some other collection. And to make it obviously and explicitly which one you want to use, just use the fully qualified name. And things like that, that might not cause an issue for you or it might not cause an issue in your first tests. But why not just do it properly and avoid that issue in the long run and not, ha not have funny errors uh, happening all over the place on the weekend uh, at on-call. So, really helpful. Then there's some uh, other tools in the Ansible ecosystem. I'll talk about uh, some of them. Most of them are already packaged for OpenSUSE. Um, I haven't used all of them in too great detail, uh, but they should mostly work. If not, feel free to uh, shout out. We talked about tasks and roles that are using these modules. And modules are just bas uh, basically Python underneath. And some of these modules might have Python modules as dependencies. You need some cryptography, or you need some LDAP Python module, or you need whatever. So, you need to have the right collection version and you need to have the right Python module version and you need to have some other packages which might require to involve multiple tools, RPM and PIP and Ansible Galaxy and all of the place. Um, some things you could do with a, a VN with a Python virtual environment but that's not something that you can package up easily and give to your co-workers. So the idea is containers, hey! We just run Ansible inside a container. We build a container image that has our exact specification. I need that collection, I need that Python module in that version, put it into a container and just run that and I have everything I need. How do I run that? Ansible runner to the help. Basically, you don't call Ansible directly, you call Ansible runner and that starts the container, runs Ansible inside and does whatever it needs to do. Um, which makes it really easy to consume those images that you just built with Ansible Builder. Um, this is a big part of the latest state of AWX and the Ansible automation platform which is the Red Hat product name for the upstream. Um, they previously used Python virtual environments and found out that's not working really great, so they came up with that solution. Uh, so this is where Ansible Runner is uh, largely used. If you're using things that other people built, that's really easy, but you might end up with using something that's not what you expect. Someone might just put malware into the Python modules or into the Ansible roles or collections and things like that. And Ansible Sign is a tool that can help you sign your content and the users can then just verify that everything is as it should be. I know, thank you. Um, I mentioned AWX, which is uh, a web front end and a central execution node for running Ansible. Of course, I can manage my infrastructure from my laptop, but if I manage the same infrastructure from my laptop, then my coworkers, if we're running in parallel, we might end up doing things differently. And I have no idea what my colleague did. I don't have access to the logs. I, I see nothing that he did, and same the other way around. So if you think about auditing and logs, so having a central place where all of that is stored is really helpful runs uh, in Kubernetes or OpenShift, uh, has uh, role-based access control and things like that. And finally, Molecule. Molecule is using Podman or Docker 
to spin up containers and have them then managed by Ansible, which is really helpful for testing if your role behaves as it should be, if your role targets Debian and OpenSUSE and you want to test all of them and you want to implement Fedora and Alpine Linux in addition, um, you can test multiple operation systems, operation system versions, you can test different uh, virtualization providers and um, you can verify using Ansible, run it twice and see if it's idempotent. Uh, you can use Ansible and do some assert things, so make sure the package is installed after the first run and there's a test infra framework for uh, testing. Okay, and uh, with that, I'm at the end of the presentation. We might have some uh, minutes for questions. Um, if we don't uh, answer all of the questions, just uh, ping me uh, in the hall. Yes, Seife. Uh, just shout out, I'll repeat the question. Can you also build this for Slash 12? If you, the, the question was whether I can build all of that for Slash 12. Um, basically, if you get a Python version 3.9 or higher working on Slash 12, and you get all of the 400 dependencies, I think, that are in total for Ansible Lint and Ansible, um, you can, of course, build that on Slash 12. But it might be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, basically, a module is uh, something that uh, does something on the end node. So uh, basically, the packages module installs a package. And it might use some Python code underneath to see if it's RPM or if it's uh, Debian or whatever. A plugin is something that might help you gather information. Um, so if you need an inventory from something AWS, you want to get all your, of your virtual machines, you have an inventory plugin that just spits out information that Ansible can then use. It gets a little tricky sometimes because there's uh, not always a clear distinction. There's all kinds of plugins that might do a little more, uh, but that's the, the basic idea. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so, uh, version of collection and version of core. Yeah. Core yeah. Um, basically, the, the uh, question was whether there is a compatibility between the Ansible core and some collection, how that is handled. Basically, there's a file called requirements.txt that can be used in a role or in a collection. I, I'll be done after that question, yes. Um, that specifies which version uh, you need for that or which other requirements you have. And each role can make a uh, version constraint. I need Ansible Core 2.14 or 2.12 or 2.4. Uh, and so it's up to the author of the collection to know which parts of Ansible he's using and in which version that was introduced. And then you can uh, make sure that you're just using the same things. Okay, uh, the rest of the uh, questions, just ping me in the hall. Thank you for your attention and have a nice conference, everyone. <laughs>